All right, here we go. It's like the news, man. Fuck it. We'll do it live. Thank you so much for joining Spazzing Out, my podcast and live stream. If you're listening right now to my podcast, we do it every Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday night at 6.30 live on TikTok and on Facebook. So you can join Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday night at 6.30. Join the conversation on TikTok and on Facebook. Hopefully someday it'll also be Instagram Live, Twitter Live, and YouTube Live. I don't have enough devices to do all that. I got an iPad right here for my people on ticks. I got my Facebook family right here. And I have my phone, which is what I record this podcast on. I am not prepared whatsoever for today's program. I had to work long, extra long today. Very long day at Take Junk. Got in really early. Five. Got there about 5.15. I literally got home at 6.15, took a bird bath, and hurried down here so that I could get the podcast going in time to talk to you guys. A couple of things that I do know that I want to talk about. Cheese pizza. What place makes the best cheese pizza? I had this debate all day long on, on, on Facebook. What's up? Cash bent. Um, debate all day. What, what place makes the best cheese pizza? I want that to be a rolling conversation on today's program. And I will start with what place makes the best cheese pizza. Actually, you know what? Why don't we start with this? The rules are the only pizza that matters. Cheese pizza is the only pizza that matters. Cheese, I'll say it again. Cheese pizza, thank you for someone just hit me up. This dude sent me a rose. Thanks, bro. The only pizza that matters is cheese pizza. Second rule. If you are not, if you do not eat cheese pizza, you have lost your right to cheese pizza. Cheese pizza is the only pizza that matters. And if you're not eating cheese pizza, you've lost your right to cheese pizza. The best cheese pizza on the planet. The reason this is the best cheese pizza is it's four cheese blend. It's delicious sauce. It's unbelievable dough. The way it's cooked in the rotisserie oven. Papa Gino's pizza is by far the best. Someone just said cheese pizza sucks. Clearly, they don't know anything about pizza. Brah, so disrespectful. The only pizza that you should be eating is cheese pizza, but I'm not going to go on a massive rant about cheese pizza right now. You can check out an earlier podcast. I want to know what you guys think is your best favorite pizza. Papa Gino's pizza is the best pizza, best cheese I've ever had. Now, I do have a top five. But I'll give you guys a chance to say what you guys like for cheese pizza. We'll make it a going conversation on today's program. I do have a top five cheese pizzas. We're not talking about any other kind of pizza. We're not talking about pepperoni pizza. Don't emoji me the goddamn pepperoni slice of cheese, slice of pizza. It's garbage. It's so rude. I got to get in touch with the emoji people and tell them, brah, should be a slice of cheese. Another thing that I want to talk about. Defunding and disbanding the police in Minnesota or in, in, in uh, whatever their goddamn man. I'm just all over the place today, kid. What's the big city called there? Oh, my God. Minneapolis. Woo! There you go. All right. Minneapolis City Council is this, has already kind of got together and like, hey, we're going to disband the police, we're going to defund them, and we're going to go community-led safety programs, and I want to talk about this, what's going on all across the United States where people are talking about defunding the police, and this segment is, you know what, this should, this segment should be, you don't know shit about fuck, or it could be, how stupid are we? Before we get to that, today, for me, was one of those nightmare days. I own a junk removal company, and in my company we have dump trucks, 15-yard dumpsters, they're, they're junk removal trucks, and my whole effing day got effed up by a goddamn nail at the dump. Literally, it, a tire is like $250. Now, the good people, my good friends at Patriot Tire in Woburn, 
took care of me. They changed it out really fast. But still, it's so expensive when you lose a tire. It, you lose time. You lose money. It's frustrating. It's frustrating. So that effed up my whole day, which is why I am late. Had a busy day with work. Then I couldn't get back here quick enough. So I couldn't do any research for the show. I don't even know what's going on in the country. All I know is what place has the best cheese pizza. Police office, police cities want to defund police. And I know that Massachusetts is on the phase two of reopening. And that means that you can go to a restaurant and sit outside. And my daughter is behind me, behind me, and behind me, bouncing around. Presley, if you would like, you could come over here and say hi to everybody. Come on. All right, guys. This is my daughter, Presley Ray Pazzioli. Uh, she is, uh, who's, who's, who's my number one? Me. Who do I love more than anybody? Me. Who is the smartest girl in the entire world? Me. Who is the kindest? Me. That's right. You want to say hi to everybody? Hi. Say hi, guys. What's your favorite pizza? Meatball. What? Meatball? <laughs> Cheese pizza. Oh, I'm just kidding, Presley. All right, go. Yeah, there, there, there is no meatball pizza in my house, bro. If she wants meatball, her Grammy has got to cut up meatball and throw it on top of a pizza and bake it in because it's cheese pizza through and through right here because that's all I eat and that's all I will order. So on from the tire, okay? Let's talk about, oh, and, and you know what? Another thing I want to talk about is Congress is trying to pass a bill um, that is going to require all police officers to wear body cams and get rid of the chokehold. So we, we do have, um, yeah, that, I got a girl. That's my lady. I, I, I want to talk about this stuff. It's important that we talk about it, but I want to let you guys know that I do eventually want to move away from this stuff. I want to have fun. I want to have you know talk about stuff that is serious but at the same time have a little bit of fun uh meatball pizza that is an absolute disgrace i agree and it ain't happening so pizza papa Gino's is my number one the reason that it's my number one convenience you can get it just about anywhere in new england number two their four cheese sauce blend is bomb and the way they cook it is delicious not to mention that it's just it's easy to get Simple. You can order it, man, and they'll bring it to you, and it's good. It's definitely the best chain pizza around. Uh, my number two cheese pizza place is, I'm going to say it wrong, but it's Regia, Regina, Pizza Regina uh, in the North End. But they also do it with Polcaris. Phenomenal pizza. Uh, number three is from Woburn. Louis and Woburn has, has phenomenal cheese pizza. So that's my number three. My number four is Bianchi's on Revere Beach. And my number five is Santapio's. Santapio's is great, but for some reason, when I go to Santapio's, I feel like I'm I feel like it, it's a drug deal. So you order a pizza from this place called Santapio's and and I think it's East Boston. And you know, you can't even go, you don't go into the establishment, you go in the back door. And it's, it, it's honestly, you do the preacher's handshake where you're like sliding some dude cash. It's mad shady. The pizza's really good, but honestly, I, it makes me feel like I'm doing a drug deal. I'm, I'm not kidding. It's so suspect. You go in the back door of this fucking place. So there are my top five. My number one, Papa Gino's. My number two, Pizza Regina, whatever, however you say it, North End. Um, number three, Louis Pizza. In Woburn, it's on Main Street in Woburn. You have to try it. It's phenomenal cheese pizza. Um, my number three was um, oh my god, I, I, my number four. Uh, how, how am I already forgetting what it was? My my Bianchi's, all right up here on Revere Beach. It's at Renzo's. Phenomenal pizza. It's delicious. And my number five is Santapios. So you guys can debate and you guys can beef me on that all you want. You will never convince me that Papa Gino's is not the best pizza on the planet. It is great pizza. It sucks for those people who are listening um, to on TikTok that live like five bazillion miles away. Sorry that you don't get to get Papa Gino's. As a matter of fact, I remember years ago when I was working at WAAF and uh, we got a new GM. The GM, her name was Julie Kahn, and she moved on. 
and uh, Jeff Brown became the GM, and he asked me, he said, do you know any good Italian restaurants in Boston? He said, you know, his family's coming up, and he wants to take them out for an Italian. And I said, Papa Gino's. Straight up, I was like, yeah, Papa Gino's. Papa Gino's is bomb. Good pizza. Papa Plata, bro. You ever had the Papa Plata? Ziti. You get ziti, two raviolis, two meatballs, breadsticks. Bomb. Get the penne. They have the best meatball subs, best steak and cheese subs. Did you also know they have hot dogs? Papa G's has hot dogs, brah. It's mad good. <clears throat> All right. Pizza. Debate it. Let's have a heavy, strong debate on where the best pizza in New England is or in Massachusetts. I'm hands down Papa Gino's. And it's got to be cheese pizza. I don't want to hear any of this shit about other kind of flavors of pizza because I don't care for that crap. And if you're eating it, you've given up your right to cheese pizza. So let's get to Congress. Body, police cams and, uh, and chokeholds. So it's getting really, it's super frustrating to see the knee-jerk reaction and to see Congress not support and back law enforcement. And some of you would say, oh, you know, they're, they're, they're backing them. They're just changing the rules to make things a better place. I would never want to be a police officer now. We're going to have a whole generation of parents that are going to down their kids from wanting to be cops. For example, like, if you'd said to your parents, I want to be a salesman, they'd be like, oh, weasels, snakes, scumbags. You don't want to be a salesman. I like salesmen. I'm just saying in general, that's one of those professions where you're like, oh, you're a salesman. That's what's going to happen to the police officer now. Knee-jerk reaction. Everybody's upset with police officers. And now we're going to make it more difficult for them to do their job. We're going to take away their ability to, to submit somebody. I want you to think about this. They're going to have to second-guess themselves. More police officers are going to die because they're going to have to second-fucking-guess everything they do. Or... They're going to be much like the teachers. So I want you to understand this analogy I'm about to make. School teachers can't do shit. They can't hit your kids. Not that I want them to hit our kids. Okay? They can't discipline the kids. They discipline. They can't talk to bad to the kids. They can't call the kids out. And if they give kids bad grades, the parent has to just call the school and say, Oh, why didn't you give my, my kid an A? And then the teacher says, Yeah, fuck it. Your kid gets an A. And why do I know this? I know someone that's a teacher really close to me. No one gives a shit. Teachers can't do anything. All it takes is a parent to call, and teachers are scared, man. They run scared. They're worried about the shit that they say to kids. Because all it takes is one of those little brats to be like, oh, you know, uh, Miss Souza said that I was ugly or something, and they're fighting. Instantly, they never take the teacher's side. They always take the kid's side. So basically, they cut the balls off of teachers. Teachers don't have nuts anymore. They snip the teacher's nuts. Now they're just babysitters. Hand straight up, teachers are nothing more than babysitters. They go there, they sit, and they watch your brat-ass kids. Thanks, bro, for hitting me up. I, I don't know how to say the something I can't read, but I, I recognize you. Um, for those of you who don't know, I'm live streaming on TikTok and on Facebook and on TikTok. People can send me um, money. I don't know, gems. And uh, King Fam is sending me some gems right now. So just a way that I can make a little bit of cash for doing my live feed. Uh, thanks, King. But teachers are, have been neutered. And, and think about it because you, you right now, listening to my podcast, you, the parent, Know what I'm talking about because it's you that doesn't say, oh, it's my son's fault. Oh, it's got to be the teacher. Like my son the other day tried giving me some guff about, oh, dad, the teachers don't respond when, I, when I'm doing my math homework. I have questions. I was like, yeah. So well, how's that the teacher's fault, bro? The teacher's probably out getting hammered, having a good time. Why don't you do your damn homework and pass it in or give it to me? I'll double check and pass it in. Oh, but the teacher won't respond. Shut up, man. That's what I say. So. Back to the cops. We already neutered the teachers. Now they're nothing but babysitters. Okay? Congratulations, somebody actually just graduated. We all know how I feel about graduation on this program. What I feel about graduation is I'm not going to congratulate you for something that you fucking are supposed to do. But, bro, congratulations, Brandon, for moving on in life. I hope to God that you realize that this is the beginning of life. 
and that the accomplishment that you just accomplished is good and you should celebrate it, but only for like a day because like Bill Belichick said, we're on to Cincinnati and you need to get ready and man up. And I hope your parents said to you, it's time to stop paying rent. But congratulations for graduating, bro. Teachers are neutered. Now we're neutering police officers. Police officers are going to be wearing body cams. Everything. Now, I don't know if I, how I really feel about the body cam thing. I, I guess I don't really care if like, like the government watched me. They could watch me all day long. I don't do anything wrong. So the body cams, I'm not that upset about. I'm cool with it. Have body cams. You can see what the cops are doing. Great. Their superiors can have video of everything that's going on. Phenomenal. I don't have a beef with body cams. Um, I'd like to get someone from law enforcement's thoughts on body cams and maybe educate me a little bit more as to why it might not make sense to have body cams. But at this point, I'm okay with the body cams. I'm not okay with them taking the ability away from police officers to do what they have to do to restrain somebody. But once that person is restrained, that's it. Once they say, uncle, it's over. Once they're handcuffed, enough's enough. Plain and simple. But these cops, they don't know what they're walking into. And now they're going to second guess themselves and they're going to get hurt. Or they're going to go the route of the teacher and just say, fuck it. There goes a guy. He just stole a candy bar. Whatever. I'm not going to say anything about it. Yeah, but candy bar. Big deal. There goes a guy. He just stole a car. Nah, whatever. He just stole a car. I'm not going to get a beef with this guy. If that dude gets hurt while I'm trying to save your car, I'm going to get written up. I'm going to get kicked out. It's garbage. You're handcuffing the police. These people need to protect us. The things that they do are to protect themselves and to protect others. They need to do whatever they have to do to subdue a criminal within reason. You know, you don't use, you don't shoot a guy who doesn't have a gun. I get it. But you could certainly tackle a dude to the ground and put him in some kind of hold until you get him handcuffed. And then when he's handcuffed, you let him go. Be smart about it. Common sense reform for cops isn't doesn't even need to be done. It's just like, uh, what's up, bro? Someone said, what's up? Um, th- it, it doesn't need to be done. It's just, you know, your boss needs to come in and says, hey, use some fucking common sense out there when you're arresting people. If the guy doesn't have a gun, tackle his ass, handcuff him, throw him in the car, that's it. You don't hit him after that. You don't stomp on him. You don't choke him out. Boom. In the car. Done. And then if there's another police officer there and they feel like their buddy is getting a little overzealous, dude's all fucking pumped up and the, and the, and the adrenaline's going and he's just huzzah, man. Huzzah. He's beating some dude up. Well, the other car can just go, Hey bro, bro, you got him. It's done. It's over. Back off. Chill. Relax. Calm. Fucking time out time, bro. One, two, three, four. Five, six, see? Nice and calm. But don't cut these guys nuts. It's not going to be a problem until it's a problem. It's quite like, man, you ain't going to fucking do shit till this shock swims right up and bites your ass. You defund the police. You take away their, their ability to protect. They're not going to want to do it. No one's going to want to be a police officer because that job's going to be labeled as a shit job. People are going to be like, ah, I don't want to be a cop. If I'm a cop, I might die, and, and I can't defend myself. If someone shoots at me, I can't shoot back. Someone comes at me with a knife, I can't fucking touch them. Someone's fl- going flip shit on some people, I can't put them in a chokehold. No full Nelsons, no nothing. Fucking, what the fuck? What's the point then? How are they going to protect us? They're going to be out there second guessing us. I'm, I'm going to run down the street screaming, Ah, help me! Cops going to look at me and be like, Fuck that. Look, my shift's almost over. I'm out of here, man. I'm not, nah. Next next guy can get that. It's going to cause a huge problem in the United States if we, if, if we take away their right to protect themselves and to use some kind of force to subdue somebody. You have to understand that some cops are dickheads. Some cops are bad and they use, they they abuse their power. But 99.9% of these police officers are good guys. They're good guys. Don't take away their ability to protect themselves. If you do, they won't want to be police officers anymore. They'd quit. I'd fucking quit. I'd be like, fuck this. You're telling me that I got to go out here and I got no nuts? No one's going to respect me. You know, if my father 
never hit me as a kid. I'd have no respect for him. If that guy didn't have balls, are you kidding me? I would have walked all over my father. I challenged that man every fucking day of my life I was in his grill. Every day. Every, my dad would be like, easy way or the hard way? Hard way was the buckle. Easy way? What, what was, the, was the leather end? Fuck that shit every day. I was like, hard way. Fuck you, dad. Boom. And I'd run. The chase would be on. Get it. I ran that man into the ground until he beat the shit out of me one day. Kicked my ass when I was like 12 years old. Bloody nose. Beat the shit out of me. I never mess with him again. Ever again. Because he man hit me. Never before that day did he man hit me. He man hit me. Man fucking hit me. And I was like, shit. After that, it was, yes, sir. No, sir. Sorry, dad. Not even fucking sorry, dad. I wouldn't even fuck up. Yep. No problem, dad. My father would be like, you dig a ditch outside. Yeah. All right. I'd be out back digging a ditch. And he'd be like, fill the ditch back in. I'd be like, yep. Fill that damn thing in. Because I had respect. Because he had the ability to use force to keep me in check. Had my father not had the ability to use force, I would have never respected him. And I'm not saying that people need to over abuse the power. What I'm saying is you need to hire the right people, train them, make sure that the cops that are on your force are good guys, police the police somewhat, check them out, see if they're good people. Find out what their habits are. Know about them. You should be sticking your... Someone just hooked me up. Thank you. You should be sticking your finger up these guys' butts, you know, checking their temperature so you know exactly everything about them before you hire them. If there are any fuck-up bleeps, boom, they're gone. You don't hire them. Hire the best of the best. And then train them up. Train them up. And it, it's simple, man. I'm Literally, I'm just a bum from Revere Beach, from Woburn, and I'd like to think that I wouldn't get overzealous and go nuts on somebody while I was trying to restrain them. But if I do, have the other police officer step in and say, hey, chill, whoa, we got him, he's done. Get my point? Cops are good guys. They don't want to hurt people. They don't want to get fucking hurt. They got kids. They want to go home. Literally, you don't think I'm kidding about the shift is over? This guy's like, damn, shift's over, bro. I want to go get some cheese pizza from Papa Gino's. This dude just comes running by you like a psycho. Shit. I don't want to chase him down. And then when I chase him down, if I fucking hurt him, I'm going to get in trouble. I'm going to get written up. Fuck that. Let him go. And then if you let him go, that's what's the best. That's the best. Here's the best part. If the cop doesn't chase him down, and the guy goes on and he kills somebody, who gets in trouble? Think about that for a second. You've now defanged the police officers. You cut their nuts off, so much so that they don't want to chase down a fucking uh, uh, a criminal because they're worried about getting they're worried about getting in trouble themselves. Guy flies by, cops says, that eh, fucking, I'm not dealing with that shit. Then he goes down the street and he kills somebody. Each and every one of you fucks is going to be like, oh, it's the police officer's fault he let him go. We saw in his body came, the guy ran by and the cop did nothing. Well, yeah, yeah, I didn't do anything because if I do something, you guys are going to fucking put me in jail. If I had tripped the guy, you would have been like, oh, no tripping, no tripping. Police officers can't trip people. Oh, police brutality. He tripped me. And then you look at me and you're like, oh, this guy's fucked in his head because he's flipping out. This is serious shit. This is serious you're taking away their fucking balls. They're, they're, it, it's like sending a military to a war with no weapons. You just say, oh, you know, the United States, we're going to go, we're going to the Middle East and we're going to go hard. And then you just drop like a million guys there with no weapons. The, the Middle East people be like, what is this, a fucking joke? You guys kidding me? You're supposed to be scared of America? Is this supposed to be a deterrent? You dropped over 100,000 guys with no weapons? The fuck? Is that a joke? Think about it. Because that's what you're doing to the police officers. You're telling them, hey, every time you interact with somebody, second guess yourself. Every time, 
and, and it takes that's all it takes is a split second. You're not a cop. I'm not a cop. But I'm telling you, in life, everything is a split second decision. And if you make the wrong decision in that split second, it's over. It's done. Cop for one second has to think twice about doing something. He's dead. And no one cares. No one cares. Cop gets killed. Nobody cares. Matter of fact, cop gets killed. Doesn't even make the news. People are like, nah, whatever. He was probably a dickhead and abused his power anyways. That's what happens. Now they second guess. It's like, a, it, it, it's real simple. Life you could break down to sports. Um, I'd like, I'll use football. I could have used baseball, but I can't stand baseball. Baseball sucks. But we'll use sports. And you ju just use Tom Brady. If Tom Brady waits a millisecond more on some of the passes that he throws, second guesses himself, second guesses a wide receiver, the whole system is fucked up. The whole thing. The whole thing is messed up. Tom drops back. One, two, three. Second guess. Shit. Pops. Sacked. Over. Cops, they're not getting sacked. They're dying. Cops got to think. One, two. He, he, I think he's got a gun. Pulls. By, by the time he says he thinks I got a gun, I got to reconfirm. Boom, 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 boom. Cops dead. Fucking over. So why would I want to be a police officer? Why would anybody want to be a cop if you're going to take away their ability to restrain people in a humane manner? Meaning, the guy doesn't have a gun, you don't use your gun. Guy has a gun, you use your fucking gun. Simple. What's wrong with that? Protect yourself. None of this bullshit. Oh, he, he pulled a gun. You got to find another way to take him down. Fuck that. You pull a gun on me, bro. I'm pulling my gun. I don't want to die. The police officers don't want to die. And if they have to second guess themselves on everything they do, they will get hurt. And other people will get hurt, and you will deball them, and they won't want to do anything. And then you will have a society of police officers that are scared to protect you because they are scared about themselves getting busted or getting arrested for doing something while trying to protect you. And then the very second someone gets hurt, robbed, raped, or murdered by a criminal that a police didn't stop... You will blame the police for it. <clears throat> so that's one part. The next thing, which is just a, a, a complete, I can't even believe I'm doing this story. It's like the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. The people in Minneapolis don't know shit about fuck. When I ever heard that this city council is going to vote to defund and disband their police department? Dude, I thought it was a joke. Ugh, I got bad heartburn, bro. Hold on for a second. I need a fucking Tums. This, this whole thing is giving me damn heartburn. It's unbelievable. God. I'm dying in here. Sweating my ass off. And I gotta be the one to waste my program on these shitty ass fucking topics. This is what they want to do in, in uh, Minneapolis. They want to have a community. <laughs> I'm gonna laugh about it, dude. A community based safety program. What the hell is a community safe? A, or a community-based safety program. What the hell is that? Think about it. What, is it soccer moms? You're going to have a soccer mom sitting on the corner? Police and shit? You're going to have... Oh, uh, Mrs. Jones! He just stole something from the grocery store. Go get him! Bullshit! Mrs. Jones doesn't know what to do, and she's not going to do anything about it. You're going to have... Uh, I, uh, who? Uh, what, what other organizations are... Uh, that? What... Uh, Crime Watch, is that what you guys call them? Neighborhood Watch? You're going to get Neighborhood Watch together? Is this, you're going to get fucking Clint Eastwood sitting on his porch? Going to come out with his fake, with his finger gun? Be like, you kids, you have game, you kids, I'm going to get you guys the hell out of here. 
You think Batman, maybe someone's going to step up and they're going to they're going to become a vigilante hero, the Punisher or Batman or Robin or maybe fucking Superman's going to come from Krypton and save your ass. You'd have a better chance of that happening. You have a better chance of Spider-Man coming to save your, your asses than to think that defunding and disbanding the police department in your city is a good idea. Here's what happens. I, I, I'll ask anybody right now. If you live in a city that doesn't have police, no police, no police department, no fucking police, would you live there? Think about it. I wouldn't. No one would. None of us. Not one of us would move to a city that doesn't have a police department. Not one of us. Now, the next question I'd like to ask you. Someone breaks into your home. You got your kids. I got two kids. Someone breaks into your home. You got your two babies, your precious babies sleeping. They get freaked out. Who are you calling? Who? You, you going to call the, the community? The, the community-based fucking safety organization? Is that what you're going to do? You're going to call these fucking people? Oh, they got mace. They're going to come over and they're going to spray the fucking perpetrator's face. Or are you going to call the cops? You're going to call the cops because they're trained. Because they know what to do in these types of situations. Because they're going to come, they're going to kick that fucking door in, and they're going to grab that dude by his balls, and they're going to put him on the ground, and they're going to protect your babies. Next thing, police presence is a deterrent. When you have a good police department, you have less crime. Now, there is crime in every city. Could you imagine how much crime there would be if there was none? There were no police officers. I want all you people right now that are walking down the street, right? That you walk, if you're listening to the podcast, whatever, later tonight. The things you take for granted, walking down the street with no worries. Leaving your bike out in front of your house without chaining it up. Not having your car broken in. Leaving your front door open. Do people still do that? They still leave their front doors open? Leaving your front door open. All that shit you take for granted because there is a police presence in your city that protects you, that keeps you safe, that ensures that for the most part, your house is not going to get broken into. Plain and simple. You need to have a police presence because if you don't, people will just break crime whenever they want. They will break into your cars. They will break into your houses. They will do whatever the hell they want when they want it because there will be no police officers to stop them from doing it. You think you're going to go on a nice stroll down the street and not get looted? You never want to live in that city. Never ever. I just got a, a special delivery from Miss Annie. My neighbors. We'll take a quick little, I'm, we're not going to, podcast ain't over, but let's see what I got. My neighbors made me a little food. Oh, bro. All right, so my, my neighbors next door, Pam and Catherine, my moms, I affectionately call them my moms, um, my two moms next door, look at this, can you guys see that? We got uh, like ribs, corn, some pasta, come on, bro. Come on. Those are from my neighbors next door. Pam and Catherine. They're my two moms. That's, let me tell you something, bro. Nothing better than a free meal. Two reasons. One, I didn't have to cook it. Two, I didn't have to pay for it. Loot saved. Time saved. Podcast in the bag, bro. Hunt it. Hunt it. Hunt it. All right. Back to the police discussion. Earlier in the program, we were talking about pizza. Here are my top five cheese pizza places of all time. Number one, Papa Gino's. Hands down, Papa Gino's is the best. Best cheese, four cheese blend, best sauce, best dough, and the way it's cooked, nice and even on the rotisserie. I don't know exactly what that thing is. Bomb pizza. Um, number two, Pizza Regia, Regina, whatever, from the North End. Delicious pizza. I love it. Number three, Louis and Woburn. You got to go to Woburn, Massachusetts, Louis, Woburn, best cheese pizza. Uh, it's, it's the number three best cheese pizza. Number four, Bianchi's on Revere Beach. It's at Renzo's on Revere Beach. Go. You have to try it out. You'll never, you, you got to eat it when it's warm though. 
it, it's a delicious pizza. Number five is Santapio's. Santapio's would have got higher on the list if I didn't feel like I was doing a drug deal when I went to their place. Because when you order a pizza and you don't eat it inside, you go to the back door and you go inside and it's cash and it's a fucking weird scenario, bro. It just is. But I'll tell you what, I wouldn't go there for pizza if there wasn't a police presence. You know, if there wasn't uh, police officers. Now, throughout the day, um, here's a funny thing. I tried my best to do um, random acts of, of cop kindness today. I approached a police officer and Woburn and thanked them. All I had on me was a five-hour energy and a fucking Slim Jim. I, I, you know, it's not a Slim Jim. It was beef jerky. Um, let, let's be clear here. Uh, Slim Jims are not beef jerky at all. Not even close. They're just fucking meat. I don't know what the fuck they are. Um, but I had some jerky, and I had a five-hour energy, and I was like, you know, thank you for your service. He didn't want any of it. And I drove by some cops today in the truck, peep the horn, rolled down the window, and told them how much I support them because I do support them. Yeah, Louis is on Route 38 in Woburn. Try it out. It's phenomenal pizza. Back to the cops. Literally the stupidest thing. I, uh, how stupid are we? You don't know shit about fuck segment. The, the, the city council members in Minneapolis are probably the biggest idiots I've ever heard of in my entire life to think that they're going to disband and defund the police department, that they think they have a better way. I'd like to know, I don't know shit, <laughs> I don't know shit about fuck about them. I'd like to know what their background is. Is it in law enforcement? Because if it's not, then done. See ya. Peace out. Bye. I don't want to hear from anybody who's never been in law enforcement when it comes to defunding the police and take it and, and disbanding the police. Literally, it's like being a parent. Oh my God, that's one of my biggest pet peeves, dude. I'm a dad, and the worst thing, I cannot stand people who don't have kids giving me advice on being a parent. I'm telling you that literally, you ever try to give me advice on how to raise my kids, first thing I will say to you is, do you have kids? Do you have kids? Uh, plain and simple. The debate will change real fast, bro. Because I ain't going to be like, oh, uh, you you know, you don't like the way I parent my kids. Tough shit. They're my kids. First thing I will say, you got kids? Do you have kids? Because if you don't, you're out of the conversation. I, bro, I won't even, I'll laugh at you. I won't even talk to you. You say, oh, look at the way he handles his, his kid is climbing over the, the top of the chair at the restaurant. I'll stick my head over, look over the top of that thing and be like, bro. You got kids? Yeah. You got kids, bro? I think we lost TikTok. I got to pop the TikToks back in. Hold on. All right. We lost the TikTok live stream. We're bringing the TikTok live stream back on. We got bumped out. All right, people, TikTok, welcome back. All right. So, huge pet peeve of mine is if you've never done it, I don't want to hear about it from you. So, like, for example, it's like when people try to tell me how to create content, right? They're like, oh, you should do this. And they're telling me how to create content. And I'm like, bro, what? And then I ask them, I'm like, well, what do you do for a living? I'm a plumber. Yeah, bud. When I, when I need, when I have a fucking leak, my toilet's fucking leaking, I'll call you. But when it times, when it, when, when you need, when you want to create content, you call the content king, bro. You call me. I've been fucking creating content since you were a fucking sperm in your fucking mother's and your mother's nuts in your dad's balls. I'm the content king. I can't stand that shit. Drives me absolutely bonkers. If you have no experience in something, you can have an opinion on it. Fine. You want to give me an opinion on something? Go ahead. But don't be trying to push shit on me. Don't be trying to be like, you know, it's like a, it's like a kid. Talking about being drunk. It's like, what? Bro, I've been drunk more days than you've been alive. Get the fuck out of here. So if you're a parent, right? I, I might listen to you. I might listen to you. I'll, I'll say, go ahead. You got kids. I will listen and I'll be quiet. I still won't care what the fuck you say. But I'll let you get your peace out. You have no kids? Shut the F up. Do not talk. You have no right to talk. Oh, I'm a nanny. Nanny? You don't have kids until your kid wakes your ass up at three in the morning, crying, screaming, scratching, bitching, pushing you all night. Mine, 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 mine. 
You don't have kids. Man, I don't, I don't go to your place of work, right? It's like people trying to tell me how to do junk removal. Bro, I've been doing dealing trash for almost seven years now. I know everything about trash. Everything. I don't want to hear shit from you about trash unless you work in trash. Just like pizza. I worked at Papa Gino's when I was a kid, bro. I used to make pizza. It was bomb. Best pizza. Actually, you know who made really good fucking pizza? It's dude Jay Corbett and uh, Jason Parrott. Bomb ass pizza, dude. They were the best. They were the best. They were. So back to, to the police. If you're on the city council, right? I'm going to run for office someday. I really am. I'm dead serious, guys. I will run for office. I'll probably start out at the city council level. And anytime something comes up that I don't know shit about fuck about, I'm going to find an expert on it. So if we're having a discussion about law enforcement, well, I'm going to reach out to the law enforcement community and I'm going to have a task force, my own little task force of law enforcement people to help me come to a decision on what is best for the city because they know, because they're in law enforcement and I am not. Now, if I'm at the city council and they're like, hey, we need some suggestions for some content we want to create, brah, I'll be like, boom, what's up? I create content, which it's, it's, it's like, for example, I got a franchise with this, comp with this company, We Buy Ugly Houses, and I'm on their fucking creative committee because I'm fucking creative, because that's what I did my whole life. I'm the perfect person for it. But, you know, you want to talk to people about being tall? I'm not. I'm not. You People are like, oh. What's it like? You, you, anything. Big shoes, big pants. Bro, I don't know. I'm five foot fucking four. I ain't going to pretend to know what it's like with the air up there. I can tell you the air down here is pretty fucking tough to breathe. So, I want to know, is the city council, are they, do they have professional experience in law enforcement? Do they know what's going to happen once they defund and disband the police who are they going to call? Who are these so-called community-based safety people? What's their background? Who's it going to be? They're going to get the fucking Boy Scouts? That the Eagle Troop's going to come flying in? The Brownies? We're going to put the Brownies on corner to corner? Ah, My God. I'm dying over here, guys. A long day at work. My voice is shot. My kidneys hurt. I don't know why my kidneys hurt. I think I'm dehydrated, dude. I'm just frustrated. It's frustrating that when you want to have a, uh, a conversation. Oh, man. Speaking of the brownies. What the fuck? What is your favorite Girl Scout cookie? I love the Samoans. Samoans are hands down. Hands down. The best. I, 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 after that, I'd probably go the ginger, not the ginger, the, um, the mint, the black mint ones. Those are really good. But Samoans, best Girl Scout cookies, literally delicious. <laughs> um, <clears throat> just drives me nuts that lately I have to waste my time talking about this stuff. I feel like I'm like the dad of the United States. Honestly, I feel like I'm father U.S. and I have to T talk to people like they're my children. I feel like I need to go to Minneapolis and I need to sit down with these city council people and let them say, you know, get, get let them get out. It's like it's like listening to my son trying to tell me how shit should be. Well, Dad, if you do this, and I just sit there and I'm like, yeah, mm hmm, okay, okay, great, mm hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm, and then I wave them off and I'm like, yeah, okay, all right. Bye, buddy. The adults are talking now. And they kick the city council out. And then go get the damn chief of police and say, Hey, bro, how are we going to make the police officers better? What can we do here to ensure that we don't kill anybody? Uh, uh, you know, brutally murder people. That's all you got to do. You get with the chief of police and say, Hey, bro, how do we not do this again? How, how are we going to make sure that doesn't happen again? That's it. Make sure it doesn't happen again. You don't fucking get rid of the whole police department. Especially when you know nothing about law enforcement. And what, you're just going to put other people's lives in danger. Their blood's going to be on your hands, city council. You need Father U.S. to come to your city and tell you how to do your shit. It's simple. Here's life. Life is very fucking simple. Father U.S. tell you how to do it. Okay. You want a pizza. 
I would like a cheese pizza. Have you ever made a cheese pizza? No. Great. There are many establishments that have lots of experience in making cheese pizza. Call one of them and they will deliver you a pizza. That's how simple life is. I, I want to get rid of law enforcement. Do you have any experience in law enforcement? No. Great. There are millions of higher education places, millions of training places, millions of former great police officers, millions of great fucking military people. Call one of them and ask them for some guidance on what you should do with law enforcement. That's how simple life is. Anthony, do you have any experience in creating content? Why, yes, I do. Oh, great. You don't have to call anybody for advice because you know how to create content because that is what you do. Anthony, do you need any advice on trash? Oh, no, you've been working in trash for seven years? Well, then you don't have to call anybody about trash because you know about trash. Simple. If you don't know about something, you have two options. Two. Two. First option, hire, find someone that knows how to do it. Take their advice. Second one, spend years of your life learning how to do it. Years of your life on the job experience. Then, then you can be an expert on it and people will shut up and listen to what you have to say. God. Why do I have to be the person to be the person that, that has to make this clear to the United States of America that life is really basic? It's basic. You need law enforcement. You need law and order. If you don't have law and order, the masses will surely be asses. The mutants, the mass mutants will go bonkers because there will be no deterrent to keep them from doing bad shit. And then what happens is the homeowner has to... Oh, wait. The homeowner can't protect themselves because you guys took their guns. So now the homeowner has to grab a fucking butter knife when someone breaks into their house. And then, God forbid, you stab someone with a butter knife to protect yourself. You see how it goes down? No police. Right? You defang the police. You take away their right to... to to, to do what they have to do to protect us, they're not going to want to be cops anymore. You straight up just get rid of the police department, all hell will break loose, crime will go everywhere. People break into your house, you already took our guns, so now I can't protect my family. Bad people will do bad things if there are no police to stop them. Gangs will take over. You will have gang mentality. You will have one guy running a borough of Minis uh, 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 Minneapolis. And then there'll be gang fights. And this guy said, well, I'm, I protect this borough. And then if you fucking break his rules, you die. I live in Massachusetts. I just don't feel like it, it's ridiculous, man. It's just ridiculous. It's the most disgusting thing I've ever seen in my entire life. I've been alive for 41 years, and I have never seen such disrespect ever for anything in my entire life. I'm sitting here really trying to think to myself, when has there been a time since I've been alive that there's been such disrespect for an organization such as law enforcement? The very people that protect us and keep us safe. We're having conversations in the United States about defunding them and disbanding them and taking their fucking nuts away to protect us. I can't even believe it. I, literally, I'm trying to think of something else that's ever that's happened since I've been alive that's been like it. Man, it's just so disheartening. And I'm reading all these stories about police officers that are going to retire early because they, they don't want to deal with the shit, so they're going to get out. De uh, reading all the stuff about cops in general, a bunch of police officers just don't want to be police officers anymore. They're going to retire. So now you're, you're scaring away the men and women who are willing to protect us, but they can't protect themselves, so they're out. It's upsetting. It's just upsetting. We 
need to do something to show law enforcement that we support them. And we also need to do something so that our Congress doesn't cut these guys nuts off. They can't defang the police. They can't defund them and they can't disband them. We need their protection. And we won't know it until it's too late. We'll get rid of them. You'll see them go away. And then in our darkest hour, when we're looking for our superhero, when we're looking for our Batman, for our Superman, for our Spider-Man, who just happens to be, I don't know, Jeff Carew or Rob Curran or Mario Pascuccio down the fucking street or Dennis McGrath, they're not going to be there to protect your family because we got rid of them. They're not going to be there to protect us because they can't. Because they're nervous that they're going to go to jail for the rest of their lives because we've come up with a bunch of fucked up laws so that we, they can't do their job. Now you're going to have to protect yourself. And the problem, the problem with you protecting yourself, here's the problem. 65 plus, you're all old fucks, you're going to get your ass kicked. Maybe there's a few tough 65 plus guys. I know a couple. I do. They're really tough. But they're old, and that shit sucks. Anybody that's under 40, I don't know, maybe under 35, you're a bitch. Hands I guarantee you're a bitch. Guarantee it. You're but maybe under 30. All right, anybody under 30, I'm I'm guaranteeing it. I I don't even care if you're a good athlete, you're a bitch. I guarantee it. Your, your parents fucking raised you like a, like a little bitch. They didn't hit you. They put you in timeout. They didn't give you a tough time. You didn't have to grind it out. You didn't get fucking, you know, you got put in timeout. You didn't get the easy way, the hard way. You didn't get the belt. You didn't get your ass kicked. You're a bitch. So you guys aren't going to be able to protect yourself. There's a few. There's a very few of you guys that are younger that are still hard-nosed people. Very few. Those people, I know, I'll tell you what. Shit goes down. I'm going to look for every fucking guy that ever wrestled but actually made it. I'm going to go and anybody that placed uh, second or highest or higher in the all states or fucking third or higher in the fucking New Englands and Massachusetts and I'm going to make them my best friend because those people are tough people. Wrestlers, you can't fuck with them. Tough people of all ages. I was a terrible wrestler. I'm all hot, dude. Don't come to me. If you need protection, when this shit goes down and there's no cops, you come to me, you're going to die. I'm terrible. Uh, I'd go to my brother Mike's house. That's where I'll go. When shit goes down, I'm going to my brother Mike's house because he's the toughest kid I know. I mean, shit. His house, Gary Layton. Those people, the McLaughlins. Huh. All right. I apologize. Uh, I didn't have much uh, time to do any show prep or anything tonight. I got home 6.15, I took a quick shower, I hopped on here, I knew we were going to talk about defunding the police officers, and before we go, just to make this clear, so that everybody knows, we need you, I need you people, to take a second out of your day, every day, just now, just for a little bit, and if you see a police officer, thank them, simply thank them, roll down the window, beep your horn, Thank you, officer. If you see a cop buying something that's short money, I'm not asking you to come out of your pockets for big dough. Short money, $5, $2, whatever, buying a water, buy it for them to thank them. They need our support now more than ever. Their morale is low. They think we don't care about them. They think we could care less. We need to show them that we care. So the only one that can do that is us. That's it. I'm doing it right now. I, I'm, I'm going to go, I got to figure it out, but I'm going to go buy some gift certificates. I'd like to get like, you know, a bunch of $10 gift cards to Dunkin' Donuts. And every time I see a cop, boom, I'm going to say, hey, bro, here you go. I know it's not much. It's only 10 bucks to Dunkin' Donuts to, to Dunks, but I really appreciate you and I love you. And I was just tell them, tell them that tell them straight up, man. I appreciate you and we love you and we respect you and we stand and we support you. Because I want them to be there when I need them. When I, I want them to come. When my son's got to call the police, I want them to come. When something bad happens, I want you guys to come and help me out. Please. Please. Right here. I'm in Revere. You guys know the cops know where I live. You guys know where I live. I want your protection. 
Thank you. Please and fucking thank you. Yes, I would, bro. All right. Papa Gino's. Papa Gino's cheese pizza is the best cheese pizza. Hands down. Number two best cheese pizza. Regina, Regina, Pizza Regia. However you say it, it's in the North End. It's number two cheese pizza right here in Boston or in Massachusetts or whatever you want to call it. Number three best cheese pizza is Louie's in Woburn. It's on Route 38 in Woburn. Phenomenal cheese pizza. I think they only make 100 pizzas a day. So if you want to get one, you got to order ahead of time. Unreal cheese pizza. Uh, so that's three. Number four is Bianchi's on Revere Beach. It's at Renzo's. And number five, uh, Santapio's, which would be higher on my list if... I didn't feel like I was buying drugs when I went to go get your pizza. The experience fucking skeezes me, but the pizza's really good. Okay? Papa Gino's gets top for me. Best cheese, best sauce, best dough, and it's convenient. It's convenient. There's a Papa Gino's everywhere, bro. Convenient. Yeah, Santapio's mad shady when you go there. Someone just said cop, cop lives matter. Yep, 150%. Cops lives do matter. All right. I'm going to go eat my, my ribs and my corn that my neighbors made, my mom's next door, uh, my two moms. They made me some food. I'm going to eat. I'm going to relax. Uh, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 6.30, TikTok, Facebook. My Facebook people, if you don't follow them, Facebook people, if you don't follow Spaz or Spazzing Out, please do. Or go to the website, anthonypaziali.com, subscribe to the podcast. My TikTok peeps, thank you so much. 30,000 followers on TikTok and growing. I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for supporting my content. Follow me on TikTok if you don't. Check out the live feed Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday nights at 6.30. Go check out the podcast. Podcast people that just listen on the podcast, thank you guys so much. I'm out. All right, podcast is over. Um, guys, as always, thank you so much. Quick update on uh, Cookout for Cops. I talked to Mike today, who is the community outreach officer at the state police barracks on Revere Beach. He gave the okay to do it, but it's not looking like it's going to happen this month. So this is something that might end up not happening until uh, July or, you know, after the 4th because of the coronavirus. So they're going to let us do it. They're just not going to let us do it right away. I'm working out all the details with him. Once I have everything set up, what they're going to let us do, what they're going to let us cook, if they'll let us have music, how many people can attend, all that shit, I will hit you guys up and let you know. Okay? Perfect. Thank you guys, Facebooks, so much. Appreciate it. All right. Peace out. Uh, no, let's see. TikTok peeps, thanks guys. Follow me. I appreciate it. Good night. Facebook, guys, thank you. I appreciate it. Podcast, live stream, everything. It gets bigger and bigger all the time. I can't wait uh, until we can start doing live broadcasts at places. I'm going to try to set one up uh, at Billy Boy Distillery or Bully Boy Distillery because uh, I just had their rum and it's phenomenal. And hopefully they'll let me do a live podcast from there and you guys can come. And hang out live while we do the podcast. I think that'd be really cool. Working on it. Once this coronavirus shit goes away, we'll be able to do many uh, more things. And, uh, yeah, I already said you don't know shit about fuck about a hundred times. Um, and I'll try to do a better job at, um, you know, being prepared for the show. I have to work a normal job, guys. If I didn't, all I would do is work on this show and create content and do shit for the show. But, unfortunately, I'm just a working class schlub. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a good night.